Blessings to you. My name is Jerry B. I am the entree musician, and so are you. And so is this wonderful young lady sitting to the right. Her name is Patrice Hawthorne. We're going to have an excellent conversation. You'll never guess all of the wonderful things that have happened in her career. She's an entree musician for sure. But before we do that, you know we got to do so this. Much. Absolutely. You know, we got to do this, though. Hey, she has a bottle as well, because vocal is the all natural beverage, which is designed to soothe, refresh and restore your voice. If you talk all day like I sometimes do or you sing all night like Patrice does. <laughs> You've got to get yourself some vocal. Go to drinkvocal.com to learn more. Patrice Hawthorne. Hey, hi. hi. What's going on, sister? Oh, my goodness. Where do we begin? Oh, welcome to the Entree Musician. I'm so grateful that you could make it to this show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. Absolutely. Now, there's so much history that you have in the music business, but I think most people would recognize the fact that you were Peaches number four in the dynamic duo Peaches and Her that rocked the 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? Exactly, yes. I was Peaches number four from 1990 to 2002. Fantastic. So. How, how, how does that work that you, that, that, there's so many peaches and one herb. How right, does that work? Exactly. Well, herb is herb. And, you know, um, he owns the name of the group. And he just decided, I guess, after a while, the different peaches, when they um, aspire to do other things or move on, then he has to get a new peach. You know, I see. So, so how, how'd that happen? How, you know, what? because obviously you had a career before joining that duo, how, how did that actually happen? How did you meet up? How did I, how did I become Peaches? Yes. Um, I performed at a talent show in Philadelphia called Whore's Light. And um, I, I made it to the semifinals in Philadelphia. And because I passed the semifinals, I went on to the finals, which is in Washington, DC. And that's where Herb lives. And somehow someone, I don't remember, it seems like it's so long ago, heard um, or knew that Herb was looking for a new peach. Or mm. peach, or, a peach or peaches? A new peaches. Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know, so um, they told him about me and where I was going to be performing. So he came out. I sang You Are My Friend by Patti LaBelle. I won my category, which was a female um, vocal category. And after the show, he came up, he said, you're the one. And the rest is history, basically. So did you know you were auditioning or you didn't know he they, was there or what? Yeah, they actually told me that he could, he would possibly, possibly be in the audience um, I listening. And then I, I was like, yeah, okay, right. I didn't think he would come. But when it was over, he was there. And he was like, you know, I'd like to give you the job. Wow. The wow. So any, did any recordings come of that or was just basically performances? Um, mostly performances. However, we did actually go to California and we stayed there for about a week and we, we recorded original music, which I actually have right in my room here somewhere. But um, it never went anywhere. Uh, so because of a lot of different uh, things that go on in the uh, sure. mu music business. So, yeah, but mostly it was just a lot of performances um, in South Africa, Korea, twice, Jamaica, and all across the U.S. That's so. excellent. Yeah. Excellent. But you had you had a great career going before uh, Mr. Herb came to see you at the talent show. Tell me how you began on this musical journey. Well, Going way back to elementary school, like I guess most of us singers, um, I did a lot of school productions, um, Playhouse in the Park, I played the role of Pearlie, and that was one of my, my first biggest roles because, um, are, you, are you from, where are you from? I'm Ohio. Oh, okay. I'm Midwest. Well, 
<laughs> there's a place called Playhouse in the Park, which is in Philadelphia, and it was huge. It, it was just a huge place where a lot of people came to perform, a lot of celebrities and, and uh, recording artists and stuff like that. And I, my school did a production of Pearly there, and I was Lily Bell yeah. in the play. And I was in the paper. They, they had an 11-year-old with the incredible voice. And um, I was in two, like, Philadelphia Inquirers. I mean, it was just huge. I was on the front cover of the newspaper. And basically, just with all the school performances and stuff like that, um, that's how I got started. And then that spilled over into um, performing with bands at clubs and yeah. weddings and bar and bar mitzvahs and um, being a band leader. Yeah. Um, all kinds of stuff, you know, just followed after that. Yeah, a whole wow. lot of stuff. I mean, I do voiceovers, I've done acting, and on and on it goes. That's a true entree musician. You never say no if there's an opportunity, hey, we're gonna jump on it, right? Absolutely, exactly. <laughs> so Patrice and the show, did that happen prior to Peaches and Herb and you picked it back up or was that particular band developed after you left, got off the road? When I was with Herb, I, the name of my band was um, Mystique at the time. And so once I stopped performing with Herb, um, I developed Patrice and the show. I see. So, yeah. And yeah. we give you a show. Yes, yeah. we do. It's all about yeah. the show. That's right. <laughs> Excellent. Now, so tell me about Darling Forever. Darling Forever, okay. That is a remake of a Marvelettes tune, which is a um, R&B female group of the okay. 60s. Yeah. Right, well, for the, well, I'm, for I'm those an old man, so. Right, for those of you who don't know, right, exactly. And um, I perform, I have, well, I perform with a group called the First Ladies of Rock and Soul, which is a 60s group. And it's a forefront female group. Um, and it's produced by a guy named Lou Belezzi. We have uh, wigs and boas and gloves and jewelry and, you know, big gaudy jewelry, you know, and we're yeah. just choreographed steps, you know, to all of our performances. And in that show, I sing Darling Forever. So I've been singing that for 12 years now. And occasionally someone after the show will come up and they'll say, you need to record that. And I've heard that many times and, you know, just like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, maybe one day. And I never recorded. Mm -hmm. So I, first Ladies of Rock and Soul ended up performing on a show here in Philly called, um, well, it's Philly Camp, um, Ali Hackett's Salt, Salt Pepper Memory Show. It's like a cable TV show. Mm -hmm. We performed on that show. After I finished singing the song, he came over and said, Oh my goodness, you need to record the song because he has a, a radio station here and he wanted to, the song was perfect for uh, the format on his radio show. I see. And he says, I want to play that song. And so I said, you know what? It's time to record. It. So I went into the studio and I recorded it. All right. So it, is it is it uh, happening on Spotify? Is it happening on, uh, you know, radio, Philly? I know Philly... Philly Soul Radio is, what's up? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't even know about that. But, um, yes. I got friends. I got friends. Exactly. <laughs> and Kenny Pitt said he knows you. Yeah, Kenny Pitt, yo. <laughs> right? Okay. And uh, Bob Davis. You know Bob Davis, Soul Patrol? Mm -hmm. No? Probably if I've seen him by uh, it, face, it, not my name. But as far as um this, the song, yeah. yes, it is, it is on, um, it is on, well, actually, I just heard CD Baby kind of shut down their business, the retail, the retail side of yeah. the business. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't yeah, know it's just, I just online only. Oh, yeah, I just found that out. So iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, mm -hmm. um, Google Music Store, I guess, that still exists. Yeah. Um, but they're also playing the song on a lot of online radio shows in, in the UK in uh, Canada, Excellent. Um, a lot of stations here in the you know, US, 106.5 is playing it as well, mm -hmm. FM. And um, I know I'm probably missing a couple of other stations, but um, it's, been, it's been awesome. You know, like a lot, a lot of people are just 
playing it and loving the song. And just, you know, DJs in the home that's online and like, oh, yeah. yo, yo, I got this, you know. <laughs> so it's been really, it's been really cool. It's been a lot of fun, you know. That's just, excellent. Um, yeah, and the the interesting thing is, is um, uh, you know, before um, the situation happened, um, the present situation that we're in, before that happened, the shutdown and all, um, there were other things that I was actually looking forward to, which is performing that song in addition to, you know, some other songs and doing some acting in a play. Um, this woman is pretty um, uh, successful with a lot of her plays in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm. And she wanted me to have a, a role in the play um, because I want to do more acting. And I was yeah. really looking forward to that, to sing and act. And of course, everything is put on hold, and sure. I don't, I don't know what you know. We don't know what's going on now. What's next, right? When, what's next? What will right? happen? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So. Well, you got to keep grinding and prepare for when the green light hits. You, you're ready I know, to, exactly. you know, get out the gate. So, yeah. what's what's been the most rewarding uh, experience for you uh, as an entree musician, as a as a singer? What's what's your most rewarding experience? Um, I would say right off the top of my head, when you said that the first thing that popped into my head, and I'm sure that I'm, you know, when we get off uh, the, these lines or the computer or laptop or whatever, I'll say, God, I should have said that. <laughs> you know, she hates that. I'm like, oh my God, I got a better answer. But hey. right now, I think, I know, you, you, can you think, I think it would be, um, Performing for the seniors, mm -hmm. I do a lot of uh, performances for senior citizens, mm -hmm. and just to see um, some of them so moved like they are, some of them have cried, mm -hmm. um, just remembering yesteryear, yeah. um, and have just said a lot of stuff like, you have no idea, you've made my my day, my, my week, my month. Yeah. Um, Moments like that is just yeah. very, very rewarding. You know, when you look and you go, wow, you know, I'm singing and they're just so appreciative and moved by it. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that came to my mind. If there's something else, I'll text you later. Say, hey, can you insert <laughs> this? <laughs> I'll turn the lights on and I'll videotape and I'll send it to you. It's like, I got another answer for you. <laughs> Understood. Well, let's see how you answer this one. Then conversely, uh -oh. what has been the most challenging experience for you as an entree musician? Ooh. Most challenging. Yeah. He's got me. Um, mm -hmm. It's good. I know. You, thank <laughs> you. You got me. Oh, um, you know, the most challenging. Yeah, I guess it would be trying sometimes to figure out who's serious when they are approaching me about something and who is not. Mm. Because I get a lot of emails and text messages and LinkedIn messages. Hey, I'm interested in working with you and doing this and doing that. And, you know, um, what do you charge for to come to Germany and sing? And, you know, that's been the most challenging because some of the, the things that I'm being hit with by certain people, some of them fall through. Some of them are just trying to see, I guess, if I'm single, you mm. know, so that's mm. challenging yeah. to find out, okay, are you for real? You know, because as, sure. soon as, yeah, as soon as you start talking more business, then some of them kind of disappear because I yeah. guess they... They had, you know, something. Ulterior motives, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah But um, yeah, and just trying to trying to navigate the whole thing of, oh my gosh, somebody's asking me to um, record a song with them, and they're in Germany, and they want to put my voice on. Yeah. You know, are you legit? Who are you? So now I got to do some research on the right. person. Are right. they for real? How much am I going to charge them? Should I ask for points? Should I just um? charge uh one flat fee so those yeah. kind of things are just kind of like ooh, 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 ooh. sure but it's sure been, it's been interesting because it's been different so it's yeah. an interesting fun engaging yeah experience absolutely yeah. 
Well, the industry is in a constant change of flux. It seems that the last 20 years has just been the goalposts that have been moved so many times, you know, yeah. and in the formats and, and what artists are putting out, what is expected. Uh, you know, uh, we are in a generation now that a million streams doesn't make you any money. But there I was know. a. Isn't that you, something? Yeah, you know, but it, it, it's more people wanting to be famous i guess by having the amount of streams but they don't want the they don't have the bank account necessarily because at least when we were doing cds and downloads we can count units and pay a light bill you know exactly. what i mean this so a lot has changed yes it, and it just makes you wonder like where is it going from here if it's correct. changed so drastically now correct you know it's it's crazy so in light of that, what would be your advice to the 11-year-old Patrice, you know, who just got her picture in the paper and just did her school play? What, would you, what advice would you give her now? I would say to make sure you um, look at as many opportunities as you can when you get into this um, business. It's not, um, like, for example, there's, there's a lot of, younger people that will look at it and say, oh, wow, I want to be the next superstar and make millions of dollars and, you know, have that million, multi-million dollar record deal. Well, times have changed, mm -hmm. you know, so you have to start looking for other opportunities, other ways that you can make money. Number one, write a song and try to get it sold or try to get somebody to record the song sure. and sit back and collect the paycheck. I mean, I sure. know... I know a lot of times people don't want to be in the front, the forefront. Like, now I don't want to just write the song. I want everybody to see me and notice me. I want to be famous. Right. You know, but there's also other things you can do, like in a Broadway or off a, a Broadway musical, you know, um, do some acting, write your own films, you right. know, um, pro direct, produce and direct your own films, create a musical, whatever it is that you want to do, maybe create it yourself or just get on the internet and find people that are doing that, you know, and exactly. hook up with them, stuff like that. So there's just so many other areas in this industry that you can explore. And that's what I would really say. Don't limit yourself to just one thing and say, oh, I just want to sing. Look at all yeah. the other stuff that's going on. And, you know, sometimes, I mean, life, life can be a trip. You know, not everybody, I mean, let me put it this way. You want to encourage for yeah. sure yeah. you want to stay positive you want to push hard you want to continue continue to push to push to push to push but sometimes certain things just don't happen for everybody sure absolutely you know, i know people don't like to really no hear that. that's that's but really it, that's excellent advice yeah so hopefully if you you know, wanted to be the next superstar like Prince or Michael Jackson and that didn't happen for you, hopefully you will find some happiness or some comfort in being the next, uh, I don't know, um, uh, director or producer yeah. of some film that yeah. you created. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I um, do. So hopefully that you'd be happy doing that if the other thing doesn't pan out. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And I, I would say, you know, learn as much of the business as possible so that you can own as much of your content as you can. Because, you know, like you said, if you were going to tell the young lady to sit down and write a song, I would tell that same young lady she should also own the publishing oh, in the absolutely. song. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely. Because so many artists um, have... Of course, I'm sure you've seen shows like Unsung, oh, no. but so many artists have um, been taken advantage of, you know, mm -hmm. in so many different ways by just signing, you know, blindly because they yeah. were so hungry, you know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and just yeah. lost their rights to catalogs of songs and all so, kinds of stuff, you know, oh, yeah. reading that fine print, as they always say, is really, it's, really 
It's a strange, it's a strange industry. Uh, you know, I was talking to uh, Bob Baldwin. We had several great conversations here at the Entree Musician and, you know, with him being in the business 30 plus years and 30 albums, you know, on various uh, major labels and whatnot. But he's, he said very, very straight. He says, yo, you know, since I've gotten to this business, I've seen people who have lost uh, catalogs, people who've gone to jail, people who, I mean, it's, but it's an unregulated business. You know what I mean? Uh, the music business is one of those businesses, I guess like any other that they made it up when they, as they went along, but there's so many sharks uh, in exactly. the music industry that it's, it's crazy. So you, really you can't is. come into it blind. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, exactly. And that, that really can be um, a major turnoff that there are so many sharks in the business. But I guess at the end of the day, you know, whatever your passion is, you just have to follow that and be as as knowledgeable and learn as much as you can to try to protect yourself as much as you can. That's absolutely you know, and right. Just live life, have fun, That's woo! Right. You know, That's have right. different streams of, of income too is right. really important. You know, not just one one stream of income that, which that's correct which is which is interesting to talk about because of where we are right now that is you know correct. there are some entertainers that you know artists that's all they do yeah you know is um so they've lost a lot of gigs i'm correct. talking really local artists correct they've lost correct. a ton of gigs and i have as well well i mean i did 180 dates last year mm -hmm. and i was scheduled to do like um maybe over 200 to mm -hmm. 25 to 50 yeah. and you know, all of that's gone right now. I don't right. know what's going to happen. You yeah. know, none of us know how sure. many how many dates are going to come back, and if people are going to be as eager to um, to hire. Yeah, yeah. Days, singers are they going to be eager to do that? And what is going to be the situation now in terms of social distancing? How Correct. how long is that going to go? Correct. I mean, I don't know. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I just posted uh, two videos on our YouTube channel and uh, it was talking about exactly what you said. I mean, I know friends in the business, four streams of income, five streams of income, which included touring because, you know, a lot of the A-listers, they will come to a particular town and they will hire, you know, the local musicians because it makes traveling easier for them or they'll take them out on the road their recording sessions, the Sunday church, uh, you know, musician, as exactly. well as having their own band that they play around town. So all of that is stifled. I know. So my heart, my heart has been to establish a conversation, a real think tank where these musicians get together and we must concentrate on what's next. Because again, we're all at this red light. What happens when the light turns green? If you think you're just going to pick it right back up, and like you said, with the social distancing, then the clubs are going to be the same, the venues are going to be the same, people are going to be hiring. You got another thing coming. You really exactly. need to prepare yourself okay. for right. what you're going to do because right. if that's all you got, you're going to be oh, out of luck. I know. I know. Yeah. I have done some, um, for the seniors, I've done some live um, streaming and I've done some performances actually um, outside of the the building, yeah. um, like in their courtyard. Oh yeah, and yeah. They had their mask on and they were far away. Some were even in um, on the balconies, mm -hmm. and I performed, you know, on the grounds. But um, we've often, like I said, we all are talking about what's to come. I sure. mean, I made a suggestion. I I don't know if it'll work, but like. The clubs, right? Can you imagine everybody showing up at the club, right? And you take their temperature. Whoever has a temperature, they have to leave. They can't come in. Right. You know, because they have a little thing where you just, you hold it to your temple. Right. You know, right. so it's, it's real safe and sanitary. They can even dip it in some alcohol or something and just be like, boop. They're like, sorry, you can't come in. Boop. Right. You can come in. Boop. Yeah. You're okay. And then what, doing, what if that's like, half the audience, though? <laughs> then what? Scary. Then we got Thanks another a spike. Thanks There's another a spike, know, right? <laughs> then, All then right, set it say, down. I know. But people would say, even if they did that, um, this whole conversation of 
it being the virus being in you and you not knowing because you don't have symptoms and correct you know that's that's another whole issue in itself correct correct so i don't know but like you said things are going to change yeah. and in which way they are going and how many gigs are going to pop up i don't know this will all be very interesting but i do know there are some people now that are talking about um like other things like starting to teach class online, mm -hmm. you know, they're getting, you know, going and taking classes to get sure. a little certificate to teach online. Just any other way. I know one uh, singer, she sells wine now online and she's mm -hmm. doing all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, just to um, have more um, income coming in. Absolutely. Well, again, that's what the entree musician is all about. You are an entrepreneur. You're not just a musician. You're not just an artist or a singer. I mean, if you don't apply the business, the innovation and the skills, the discipline and the mindset, then you get lost in the shuffle. That's just the way it is. I was going to ask you. I well, I am an entree musician, so I do it all. I run a recording studio. I uh, write, I act, I'm a drummer by trade. So we've had, which is how I met Kenny Pitt, which when our jazz group Sound Doctrine was down in Philadelphia, Baltimore, Delaware, Virginia. I ran into Kenny down there a couple times. In fact, he was singing, I'm trying to think of the name of the group he was singing with, but I do it all. I'm a well-rounded entree musician. You do what you have to do to make it happen. I own yeah. publishing. I represent other artists. We ran a we ran a label for a time, but uh, I was trying to be the next Barry Gordy, but that was really <laughs> really hard. I mean, you know, yeah. you have to have a lot of capital to make right. that happen. Isn't that so, a lot yeah, of so that's that's really interesting that you say that because I was just having a conversation uh, just about. Um, the fact that a lot of times African Americans, um, the opportunities that we want to take advantage of, we don't have the capital. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but financing and the financing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But here here here's the, the thing. I, the capital, yeah. I, I've never I've never let and you know, I mean, to be loved, Barry Gordy's uh, autobiography to be loved, I've never let ever, not one time, and I, I tell young brothers and sisters this all the time. I know that getting the capital, getting the financing, getting the, you know, may be hard, but it still can be done. And if Gary, uh, if uh, Barry Gordy did it in the 50s, we can do it today. And we've seen many, many examples of it. It's just a matter of making sure that everything is lined up. So in my case, because I couldn't get the capital when I did, doesn't mean that I'm not trying plan B, because plan B is always in succession. You know what I mean? Always. Yeah. And I guess with that, I guess it really just depends on, I mean, everybody is different and everybody's brain is wired differently. There are some people that will uh, struggle or find it harder or not even not think outside the box to maybe sure. get the financing or the capital. There, sure. There's other others that, you know, somebody else will help them a, a bit more than somebody else. So everybody's sure. experience is sure. just, and then when you don't know, you don't know. Sure. You know what I'm saying? When a lot of times you may have a young person that has a desire but doesn't know how to get the capital, how or Correct. finance, whatever I'm supposed to be saying, Correct. how to get that money yeah. to help them with their business. You know. It, yeah, but that and that's, I mean, how do you know? How do you? How do you well, know that, what you don't know? True, and that and that's why we began the Entree Musician. That's why we do the podcast that we do very informative, very educational. And many of the times I'm teaching from the podcast, I'm teaching from my experience of when I failed at this, the mistakes that I made doing that, the roadblocks, the detours that I had to overcome because that's the only way that you learn. You get up, you have this desire, you have this dream. It's all, you know, uh, just just speaking from a standpoint of faith, it's like, I don't believe that God gives you the chair. God gives you the tree. And then you cut out the chair. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to make your own ways. But I do think that there are things and opportunities that happen to you that you just have to wait or you have to plan or you have to research and know what you don't know, learn what you need to learn to take the next step. Well, how do you know what you don't know? So, 
here again, uh, you avail yourself. There's this place, and, and, and I'm not being insensitive. This is conversations I have all the time with young musicians. There's this place called the library. There's this thing <laughs> called the, you know, there's this thing called the internet, actually. There's this machine called Google that you can just type whatever question you think you need to know in, even keywords like publishing, music right, publishing, right. and you'll get 20,000 articles and you start there. Yeah, no, I understand that. I mean, it's just an interesting thing because we're almost getting into the the whole thing of once again going back to how a person's brain is wired, because it, and and that in itself, the psychology of how people think and how they do what they do and what they what they don't do, and how it is different from one person to the other. Sure, it's it's very deep and sure. it's very you know. But like I said, I'm not. And I agree with you, um, like I said, so maybe this is a conversation um, offline because we could take this sure. even further sure. um, with that whole thing. Like you said, the library, um, Google, and I agree. But if a, if a kid is sitting there and saying, um, I just don't know, you know, just say the, the child is 15 or the, the young person is 15 years old and wants to start a business and doesn't know where to go to get the money. Or, or who to talk to. Um, are, in a way, I almost felt like, are you saying that those thoughts are supposed to pop in his head and say, oh, let me go on the computer and search. You I guarantee I mean? you, I guarantee you, if he or she uh -huh. at 15 ask a question, if, if, if you have formulated in your mind, either I want to be a singer or a rapper, or I want to be a car mechanic or an electrician. Somehow the universe the is going to bring that up to you. I think if you, I think if you start with the question, "Hey, here's uh -huh. what I want to be," I think that puts you one step forward than okay. you were. But you know, and I agree I, with that. I agree. I, I just believe it's step by step by step. Again, I'm a man of faith, so I call it flashlight faith. I mean, God may not show you the whole picture, but He's going to with a flashlight. It's going to be those three or four steps in front, just keep walking toward it. You have that desire. Have you ever read, um, have you ever read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill? No, I heard about it though. I never Excellent. Read it. You can listen to the auto, uh, you can listen to the audio book, you know, it's I on YouTube. I will do YouTube. that tomorrow actually, yeah. The, the number one, the chapter number one is desire. Mm -hmm. Desire can take you so much further than if you so so if you're sitting there and you're a bump on the log you have no desire automatically you're not going anywhere but if you right. like patrice hawthorne had a desire there was something in you yes. that said i can do that right you didn't know everything to do right <laughs> you right. just knew to knew to do the next thing what's the next thing right you know this is very interesting that you said it and i i do agree with you and the way it's funny because i um, I guess I use a slightly different words, but we're talking about the same thing mm -hmm. because I, because I'm not religious, but yeah. I do believe that, um, like you said, if a person says, I want to be a singer, that the universe is going to open up and present that path, those things to you. The exactly. That's going to come forth, you know, because somebody's going to hear that or, you know, somebody, meaning a, a, a person, but also, I just believe that the universe will put things in place, you know, yeah. for yeah. that to be your path, you know, to, to get you there. You know, so, yeah, we're on the same page. But ha yeah, happened to me. God, some people say universe. And that's just where I understood. Am. Understood with all due respect. And I mean, I, I was a drummer from the time that I knew. And my grandfather got tired of me beating on stuff and bought me a drum set. And then what happens? You're in first grade, second grade, and they got this little school band, and you, you know, your desire takes you to the next step. Exactly. exactly. And then, oh, I'm in church, and hey, you know, okay, in the children's choir, right? The desire exactly. takes you to the next step, and exactly. and that's where it begins. And so you don't know what you don't know. I didn't know anything about music publishing, but when I was in the eighth grade, this is truth. I'm in the eighth grade in junior high school. I go to the school library. There's this book on the shelf by Kenny Rogers. And you may be old enough to remember Kim, Kenny Rogers. He's a country oh, yeah. singer. Kenny Rogers and Lynn Eppin. And it was called Making It in Music. Little book like that. I was like, mm. oh. 
So what that began in the eighth grade is a quest to know more about the music industry than just playing drums. And I, I have a friend who Kenny Pitt knows. He he lives in uh, down in Baltimore, Maryland, actually Odenton, Maryland. His name is Chris Rhodes, lifelong fl- friend. He plays the bass down there, plays with just about everybody. And so Chris told me, he said, man, you need to put that book up and s- practice more. But there was something about that book. I learned a song has a copyright. There's this place called the Library of Congress. There's this 200% called publishing. I'm an eighth grader. You know what I mean? So the the universe opening up or God giving the the grace for me to take the next step. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah. So this is where we are. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I I would imagine that I would tell the 15-year-old the same thing that you would. Start from where you are. Take the next step. Learn as much as you can, and you can grow. Yeah, absolutely. So let's switch over to Patrice and the show, though. Now, now the band is not just named after you. This is your band. You lead the band, correct? Yes, it is. I am the band leader of Patrice and the show. We do a lot of wedding gigs, bar, bar mitzvahs, corporate parties, festivals, um, you name it. Uh, Divorce parties. No, I'm just kidding. We have a... We haven't done any of those yet. That'd be kind of interesting though, you know, but, um, yeah, so. (laughs) So so tell me what it means to you. Tell tell me the importance of being a band leader of, you know, you having the right to checks, book the gigs, put everything together, do the rehearsing. Um, the importance of it. How, how you feel personally about all of the responsibilities that you have? You're not just called in for the gig and boom, let's make it happen. You have to organize everything. Yeah, well, um, to be completely honest, it's not. Um, it's it's not difficult because it's what I love to do, and, and I really pretty good at it. You know, um, it's good. I do it well. And not only that, I have a wonderful, amazing business partner, Robert Excellent. Williams. And Excellent. he helps me tremendously. He makes, you know, a lot of my situations a lot easier um, to, to deal with. So we just have fun. I mean, That's we excellent. have, he's with me all the time and, uh, you know, on every gig and, you know, helping me book the uh, clients. Um, it's just I'm good. I'm 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 very organized and yeah. all that good stuff. So yeah, it's not it's not a hassle at all. No, that's excellent. And I excellent. have I have a really really good time with uh, my band. Um, I've got a group of wonderful guys that are um, my core group because you know of course with subs you can always have different sure. drama issues of mm-hmm. you know different stuff that you might not particularly care. For. Uh, to right. deal with, but my core group of guys, very professional, been with me forever, always on time, very reliable, know their yeah. stuff. The um, six so, piece, six piece band. Um, it most of the time it's a six, but we can go up to a ten. Sometimes gotcha. we do have a ten piece band. Yeah, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, we have a groovy time. Groovy. We're just, just like, you know, my male vocalist is like myself, you know, all over the place on the floor and shout and doing all kinds of stuff, putting wigs on and, you know, and it's just so interesting because Patrice and the show is a very interactive, engaging band. Good. And with the present day situation, where are we going with that? You know, where we can't even, that's our show. That's yeah. part of our show, involving the audience and reaching out and them grabbing our hats off and trying to do what we do. And maybe we'll all be doing it with masks on. We're never starting. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to sing, take the microphone, put it up right. underneath the mask. Where we are? Oh, I don't know. How would that def- work? Everybody's definitely going to have their own microphone now, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Some, yeah a couple of people were talking about that. They were bringing their little screen or the cover for the mic, some Lysol, oh, yeah. some wipes, you know. Absolutely. 
Well, I appreciate your, your time that you've given us uh, today here on The Entree Musician. Let me ask, what is the question that you were hoping I would ask and I did not ask it and you're going, dog, could you ask and answer that question right now? Um, no, we covered a lot of groovy stuff. I mean, this was yeah. actually the first time that I had an interview where we kind of got into the psychology of oh, yeah. people and how they think and all that kind of stuff. So that was pretty interesting. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but you know, no, you, you, you covered it all. I can't think of anything. And if I do, I'll send you, I'll get dressed up again. I'll turn on the lights and I'll send you a clip. And I'll say, oh yeah, here's a question. Uh, what is your favorite food? You know, yeah. But I'll, uh, yeah. So what, what is your favorite food? Um, well, I am a vegan okay. slash pescatarian. Okay. So I do eat fish. But uh -huh. uh, I've been, I've been eating meat in over like thirty years. Uh -huh. um, very healthy. I eat a lot of uh, fruit and vegetables and, yeah. and chia seeds and flax seeds and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. I do. Um, so I um so my my favorite food I guess would probably be yes. seafood. Seafood. You know the seafood, mm -hmm. fish and mm -hmm. yeah. But um, you can ask me how old I am. Uh, you know. Uh, Yay! I like we never, my age. we we never ask, ask those questions. You want to guess? <laughs> you might say seventy-two. Come on, guess. Yes. Yeah, if you're not offering it, I'm not guessing. Guess my age. If you if you Thanks. go too high, look, then you can look, then you look, can have that part out. Look, twenty-six. Okay, so I'm safe. Stop playing. <laughs> Give me a number. Come on. Okay. I will guess your age if you guess mine. Oh, okay. gosh. What? Cool. That's that's the only way it happened. You down? Okay. Um, okay. Me? You... I'm first. Okay. Go for it. You are. Is this Is this going to be unedited? Unedited. That's the only way we do the entree musician. Wow. Okay. Okay. So you are. Wait a minute. He knows Kitty Pitt. Only because you know Kitty Pitt. It's interesting because you don't know Bob you... Davis. I met Kenny Pitt through Bob Davis, Soul Patrol. Oh. Anyway. You are 42. You sticking with that? That's your final answer? I'm scared. I don't want to play. <laughs> you started it. You started it. <laughs> Wait. Why would you say 42? Okay, well, you know, I don't want to play. How, no, how old are you? Okay, no, give me my, show me the, it's, show me it's the a, fingers. It's a guess. It's a guess. So if that's your final answer, I'll tell you after you give me your final answer. All right, final answer. That's it? Yeah. 42? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, no. It's 55. <sighs> okay. I was going to say 50 just because you, you know, okay. Mm -hmm, All mm -hmm. right. You don't have to tell me my age. <laughs> no, I've been I've been married a long time, so I I, I never I go to there. Seventy two, so never mind. <laughs> well, I I really do appreciate the time that we spent today. Uh, you know, uh, you are an entree mu musician for sure, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to have been the legitimate opportunity on LinkedIn and not a lot of this nonsense that you talked about earlier because I am a yeah. true networker. I do believe in musicians collaborating on all ends of the spectrum, whether it's musically or in business. I am a firm believer because we don't own what we should own and a lot of people own our art and we should have it. Yeah, so. exactly. 
Exactly. I agree. So I, agree. I truly appreciate your time. This is Patrice Hawthorne from Patrice in the Shell, formerly, some time ago, the fourth peach and peaches and, and her, but that's that part age? of her legacy. Is that, is that my age? You I'm, my not, age? I'm not throwing up any signs. <laughs> We thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jerry B. I've had an incredible time. I'm the entree musician. This is Patrice Hosborn. She's an entree musician, but you know what? So are you. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.